In this video, I will show you the very basics of LSDJ. I'll discuss how to navigate the software and teach you how to create your first sounds so you can start making music on the Game Boy as fast as possible. This tutorial is made up of different sections and I will post time codes for all the different subjects in the video description. Before we start making music, let's get some technical jibber jabber out of the way. The Nintendo Game Boy has four audio channels. One pulse channel with sweep functions, another pulse channel without sweep functions, a wave channel that allows for synthesis and sample playback, and a noise channel that produces noise. All channels are monophonic, meaning they can only play one note at a time. LSDJ is a tracker that runs on the Game Boy itself or on an emulator. Fair warning, whatever you do, don't buy the official LSDJ cartridges for anything other than collection purposes. Instead, buy an El Cheapo SD flash card from Benven or an EMS card. Validated stores listed in the description below. These cartridges allow you to easily back up your project files so that when your Game Boy decides to freak out on you, which it will, you won't lose your entire catalog of tracks. Game, Game Boys tend to crash. They do this every now and then. <laughs> it's very rare, however, that two Game Boys crash at the same time. So bear with me. You can also run it on an emulator if you value the safety of your save files and don't feel like spending money on AA batteries all the time. Personally, I recommend BGB because it allows you to record four channels into different audio files in one take, which saves you a lot of time. Even though you're making music on the Game Boy, LSDJ does not allow you to export songs to a format for Game Boy games. In fact, LSDJ doesn't have an export function at all. If you want to record your tracks from the Game Boy, you'll have to do it through the headphone port. If you're hoping to make soundtracks for Game Boy games, LSDJ is probably not the piece of software that you're looking for. So, let's take a quick tour of the interface that we'll be working with. As I mentioned, LSDJ is a tracker. Instead of representing your timeline horizontally, like in FL Studio or Ableton Session View, the track is played from top to bottom. Since we're working on a very small screen, LSDJ features this little map system that allows you to switch between different screens. If you look in the bottom right corner of the screen, you'll see this little map that shows the initials of all the different screens. If you ever get lost, just look at the highlighted letter of where you are on the map to get yourself back where you need to be. Before we continue to talk about the different screens, I want to talk about the number system that is used in LSDJ. LSDJ represents its different values through hexadecimal numbers. The decimal system that we're familiar with goes from 1 to 10. The hexadecimal system, however, goes from 0 to 9, then continues to A and ends at F, totaling at 16 unique symbols. 0 is the lowest and F is the highest value. This is important to know when you're editing your values. If it doesn't make sense to you at this very moment, don't worry, it'll make sense to you once we start making music. The song screen can be considered a zoomed out view of your entire track. Each of the four columns represents one of your four sound channels. Right above the song screen, you have your project screen, which is where you'll load tracks, save your project, alter the BPM, and clean your project file to save some memory. If you go one screen deeper, we'll end up in a change screen. Chains are used to sequence phrases. I like to think of chains as different sections for different songs, so a single chain or multiple chains can represent your intro, chorus, refrain, bridge, etc. The row to the left represents your pattern of phrases. The row to the right can be used to transpose your entire phrase up or down. Next up, we have the phrase screen, which is where we'll be sequencing notes, selecting instruments, and use different commands. We'll discuss all of these in the next few chapters. And lastly, we have the instrument screen, which will look different depending on what instrument type you have selected. Since the different channels have different sound capabilities, some options might not appear in other instrument types. This might look a bit overwhelming, but for now, I would advise you to focus on the following three parameters. Envelope, wave, and sweep. An envelope refers to the attack, decay, sustain, and release of an instrument. If you've ever used a synthesizer before, this will probably sound familiar to you. It determines if the note starts at a set volume or fades in slowly, the decay of the volume, the volume at which the note is sustained, and eventually how fast the note fades out. Wave refers to the waveform, which is a visualization of the waveform that is played. The pulse channel allows you to select different duty cycles on your pulse wave, which alters the sound. And lastly, sweep modulates the frequency of the instrument. LSDJ's controls depend on a lot of different combinations to work around the small number of buttons that we have available on the Game Boy. You can move the cursor around by using the D-pad. To navigate the different screens, you can hold down select and press the direction on the D-pad. For example, if I'm on the song screen and press select right, I will move to the chain screen. Remember the little map for when you get lost. You can edit the value of the highlighted field by holding down A and pressing different directions on the D-pad. Moving up and down will change the first value 
and moving left and right will change the second value. If you want to delete the value, hold down B and press A. To start playback, press start, and to stop playback, press start again. These are the most basic controls that we'll use, though I'll introduce some other useful controls as we progress through the tutorial. When I'm teaching people about LSDJ, I like to start with the noise channel since it doesn't pressure people in having to write melodies straight away. So first we'll have to create a chain. So while in the song screen, press A. Value doesn't really matter right now, just make sure there's only one chain. With your chain highlighted, hold select and press right on the D-pad to enter the chain. Press A again to create a new phrase. And with the value selected, hold select and press right. If you press A in the note channel, you'll hear that you'll now be able to sequence sounds. However, if you press start, you'll notice that the note is still sustained. So with our instrument selected, hold select and press right. By default, the envelope will be set to A8. A represents the volume at which the note is played and A determines the release of the note. So, if we change our first value to something like 6, you'll notice that the note is played much softer. If I change the second value to 3, the note will have a much shorter release, meaning it fades out much more quickly. Be careful, because when changing the second value to anything above 8, it will make the sound fade in and it can make for some deafening sounds if you're not careful. So, now that we know how to edit our instruments, we can create some simple hi-hats. It can also be useful to name your instruments, so you can easily find it back later. So, returning to the phrase screen, we're going to make our second instrument. Now, we could hold A and navigate to the next instrument slot manually, but instead we can press A twice, which will create a fresh new instrument. This is extremely useful to prevent yourself from overriding previously made instruments. Now, let's make this sound a little bit shorter, just like we did with the hi-hat. And let's also edit the shape value by holding A and pressing left. Now, here's a little tip. You can actually cut, copy and paste different values in LSDJ. So, if I hold B and press A, it will actually cut the note. You can then paste it somewhere else by holding select and pressing A. You can even select multiple rows. So, to do that, hold select and press B once. If you move the cursor around, you can now select the rows that you want to copy. If you've highlighted the section that you want to copy, press B. Now you can paste it anywhere by holding select and pressing A. So all these controls actually carry over to the other channels. So inputting notes and editing instruments is done the exact same way in the noise channel as it is done in the pulse channel and wave channel. So let's make a couple of different variations on the first phrase. Go back to the chain screen by holding select and pressing left. Insert the same number as your first phrase, which in this case is 00. zero. Then while holding select, press B and A, not together, but after each other. This creates a new phrase based on the one we made previously, so now we can make it slightly different. Let's repeat this one more time, so now we insert the latest phrase that we made and put it at the end of our chain. Hold select, press B and then A, and now we have our first four bars of percussion. Now, going in and out of phrases, it's very doable by holding select and pressing left and right, but you can actually switch between phrases while you're still in one. So to do this, just hold B and press up or down on the D-pad. By the way, this also works to switch between chains, phrases, instruments, tables, any kind of screen really. You can even switch between sound channels by holding B and pressing left and right, so make use of that. Starting from the song screen again, let's create a unique chain by highlighting the first row on Pulse Channel 1 and pressing A twice. Remember, you have to create uniquely numbered chains so you don't overwrite the chains that you wrote previously. In the chain, press A twice again to create a new phrase and let's head to the phrase screen. Now we can start writing our first melodies, so I'm going to input some notes. Now we want to make sure that we don't overwrite our previous instruments. So while selecting your instrument, press A twice and now we have a new instrument. Let's make these notes a bit shorter, and you can also edit the waveform if you so desire.
Now say that we have a bunch of notes and we want all of them to play at a different volume or a different duty cycle. You could create a different instrument for each note, then edit the instrument settings on each of them. However, that would take forever. What we can do instead is use the command row. The command row allows you to edit your sound. There's a bunch of commands that you can use and there's a really nice listing of them in the LSDJ manual. However, I've personally found that I tend to fall back on a few in particular. Those being E for envelope, W for wave and V for vibrato. There's a bunch of other useful ones that we'll get into later, but for now, these are great to get you started. By the way, you may have noticed that if you press play while in the phrase screen on the pulse channel, the noise channel won't play. If you want to hear all channels simultaneously, hold select and press start. Finally, let's move to the wave channel. This is by far the most powerful channel on the Game Boy. However, the default sound is a bit shit. So here's a quick fix for that. In the wave instrument, move your cursor to the play parameter and set it to manual. That'll give you a much cleaner sound. Often when I'm in the composing stage of a song, I tend to not focus as much on creating complex instruments and having the simple bass sound is enough to get you started with writing out progressions for your track. The first thing you'll notice is that when we check the instrument's parameters, there's no envelope. Instead, you have four volume options and the note is sustained when played. However, we can use the E command in the phrase screen to have some actual control over the volume. Just remember that since we only have four volume options, you can only use four different variations of the E command to change the volume. Using these methods, you can start writing some quick, decent sounding bass lines and melodies. Going back to the instrument screen again, you'll notice that we have a couple of different variables that we can edit. Going from top to bottom, the output allows you to pan the track all the way to the left or right. PLV refers to commands like pitch, legato, which is a note slide, and vibrato. These settings allow you to tweak the way that these commands change the frequency of the note, and they can be very interesting to play around with. Tuning I'm not going to get into at this moment because I think it ties in with synthesized drums and I'm going to link you to an external source that covers it much better than I ever could. Synth determines which synthesizer is linked to this instrument. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. Play, length, repeat and speed all relate to the way that you cycle through your waveform and the length of the actual sound. For example, you can play through once, loop it or make it go backwards and forwards with the ping pong setting. I would advise to just play around with these settings and see what sounds you can produce. So while on the instrument screen, hold select and press up and this will bring you to the synth screen where you can do all the synthesizing your heart desires. You'll notice at the top it shows which synth program you're using and this is important because unlike the pulse and noise channel, you actually need to specify which synth program you want to use in your wave instruments. So if your wave instruments don't seem to sound the way you're expecting them to, make sure to check the synth program that you've linked to your wave instruments. The wave channel is capable of producing square waves as well as a sawtooth and triangle. Changing the waveforms is done at the top of the screen. Next up, you can change the filter. By default, it's set to low pass, which is great for bass, but you can also set it to high pass, band pass, or all pass filters to create some melodies or some more experimental sounds. You can also change the resonance of your synth by changing the Q value, making your sound brighter or more dull. You can also choose two types of distortion, clip or wrap, and compress your waveform using phase. The start and end parameters allow you to specify the values of the start and end of your sounds. But you can already get some really interesting sounds by just playing around with the start parameters alone. I still don't feel like I completely understand the synthesizer even after 10 years, but it's always fun just to tweak different parameters to see what sounds you can get. Don't get intimidated by the fact you don't know what's going on, just break shit and roll with it. There are several ways of creating percussion instruments aside from the noise channel. LSDJ supports sample playback and it has some samples preloaded. And we can access these samples by using the kit instruments. Kit instruments can only be used in the wave channel. Create a new instrument and on the instrument screen set the type to kit. If you go back to the phrase screen you'll notice that you have two slots to insert notes instead of one. 
By holding the A button and pressing left and right, you can cycle through the different samples in your kit. One kit instrument can play two different kits. There are some nice drum samples on here, such as the Roland 808 and 909 drum machines, as well as some animal sounds and vocals. As much fun as these instruments are, they might not be exactly what you're looking for. So here's a few simple ways of creating synthesized drums. Let's head back to the Pulse channel and create a kick drum. Creating a new instrument, set the note to something like C5. On the instrument screen, set the envelope to something shorter like A3. The duty cycle to 50%, which looks like this. And change the sweep to E3. So what's happening is the note starts at C5, then sweeps down to a lower frequency, which creates this kick sound. You can experiment by changing the octave on your notes, lengthening or shortening the envelope, increasing or decreasing the sweep value, and trying different duty cycles. You can also mix synthesized drums in the wave channel through something called tables. So tables are something that I really had a hard time wrapping my head around when I started out with LSDJ, but it's actually pretty simple once you know what's going on. So tables can be used to sequence transposes and commands with much more control and can be used with every kind of instrument on any channel. It's extremely useful to practice using tables as early as possible, so let's start with a simple example. I've made the simple melody on the phrase screen, but I want to improve it a little bit. Unfortunately, I've used up all my space on the command row to edit envelopes and add vibratos. So let's go into our instrument, scroll down to the table value and press A twice to create a new table. Hold select and press right to enter the table screen. If I insert one duty cycle of 50% on the first row and one of 12.5% on the second, you'll notice that it makes a nice plunky sound. Or maybe you want to start off your note one octave higher and then continue at your initial frequency. You can try adding different commands on different parts of the table to create unique and more complicated sounds. If you're using longer notes, you might not want your table to loop endlessly. This can be easily fixed by using the A command on the final row and setting it to FF. A refers to a table, so when the cursor hits the last row, it plays an empty non-existent table. You can also adjust the automate setting on your instrument to on. Now the table only progresses to the next row if an instrument linked to that table is played. Another useful tip is by setting the G or groove command on the first row, the table scrolls at the same speed as your phrase. This is useful because, much like the automate setting, it gives you two extra rows of commands instead of just the one that you have on the phrase screen. So now, not only can you have a full row of envelope commands in your phrase, but you can also play through different duty cycles with occasional vibratos, note slides and pitch shifts. Aside from commands, you can also create manual volume envelopes using the volume column. So if that pesky envelope on the instrument or phrase screen just isn't working for you, you can create your own. Since all our channels are monophonic, we can only play one sound at a time. However, if we sequence different frequencies of notes and play it rapidly, it simulates a chord. Using the C command sort of allows you to do this, but it really doesn't give you any control whatsoever. 
So here's how it works when you're using tables. As you can see, the transpose row is currently set to zero, meaning it plays the original note as programmed in the phrase screen. Increasing or decreasing the transpose will adjust the frequency of the bass note. Here's two examples for a simple chord, a major and a minor. Notice how the cursor jumps back to the first row when it reaches the H command. This command allows you to make the table shorter, which is very useful when programming arpeggios. So originally I was going to explain how to create wave kicks using tables. However, Defense Mechanism posted this amazing article over on Chip is Win, and it basically covers everything and he explains it way better than I ever could. So I advise you to check that article if you're interested in how to do that. Tables might seem complicated, but they're an incredibly powerful tool and I recommend playing around with them as much as you can to make your tracks much more complex and dynamic. And that's basically it. That's the fundamentals of using LSDJ. I hope you got something out of it. Please excuse the bad audio quality. I was editing in DaVinci Resolve 15 and only found out when I was finishing up this video that I was limited to an audio bitrate of, of around 192 kbps. So that was quite frustrating. Uh, if you are overwhelmed at all by the information in this tutorial, try and choose specific things to practice uh, and rewatch certain parts and uh, it'll make sense to you eventually. It's all just a matter of practice. If I can do it, you can do it. If you're interested in seeing me make a full loop with LSDJ, there's actually another video up on my channel where I do just that. I start from scratch and I create custom instruments and create a, a four bar loop. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and thank you very much for watching.